looking into some of these different areas now and, and, and what we can be doing and, and things so. Okay, so I guess it's, it's, it's 12.05 and we can begin the session. We have a lot of attendees already. And um, for all of you present, thank you for joining in today. Um, uh, for all of you who don't know me, I am uh, Sukriti Varma and I am the co-founder of Shift Eco. Shift Eco is an uh, online aggregated portal for eco-friendly products here in the UAE. And um, while we are an online platform selling eco-friendly products, a huge core value for us is learning. And um, um, uh, a few of you would have attended our sessions back um, 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 uh, in the previous months, but um, we basically uh, also have a blog called Learn with Shift Eco, which we launched last month. So we conduct regular um, webinars on a, a monthly basis and all these are recorded. Um, they're available for your viewing on our blog. We can even send across, um, we will even send across the recording link to you in case you want to forward it through to um, anybody relevant uh, that you can think of. And um, yeah, um, so in the past, we've discussed multiple topics of changes we can make um, in our daily lifestyles and uh, whether it's the kitchen, the bathroom, our consumption choices. And today's topic actually was um, personally for me was something that I hadn't really thought of. And, you know, once I was delving deeper into the topic, I realized that toys today have such a massive environmental impact and the issues are absolutely glaring. Um, so uh, without, um, you know, much further ado, I'd first like to um, introduce all our panelists today. We have some wonderful ladies who joined us today to discuss um, um, just decoding, learning with toys and specifically eco-friendly toys. Um, so we have with us Nicola from uh, Kriya Kids, we have Katie from Eco Souk, and we have Chantel from uh, Arc Children. So um, I'll leave it all to you. Uh, um, if you all could just um, introduce yourselves briefly, tell us a little bit more about your journey, and uh, then we can deep dive into the topic. So with any one of you who <laughs> wants to start. Okay, um, so uh, my name is Nicola and I am the manager of Career Kids in Sustainable City. So obviously that's why I'm quite interested in this topic as well. Um, I'm originally from the UK. I have spent the last 11 years living across the Middle East. Um, I have uh, twin girls, they're now age eight. Um, I've never really thought about recycling and sustainability until maybe the last, maybe the last two or three years uh, and how actually pressing some of these issues are now. Um, so I'm very lucky to be a part of um, a nursery that focuses on sustainability and um, creating uh, self-conscious, you know, eco-conscious generations. Obviously, being in the sustainable city itself, using nature as part of our curriculum. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of why I was quite interested um, in this, this session today. Wonderful. Yes. Um, I'm Katie. I am the founder of EcoSouk. Um, we are an e-commerce platform. Uh, we started out a handful of years ago. Um, and started out with toys we um, are a lifestyle store now um, but with a big focus on toys children um, and as you can well imagine by the name um, eco souk um, as well is a, a priority for for anything that you'll find available on our site i'm a mother to three children um seven five and two and my business really did start when I had them and I'd be sourcing things for them from overseas that were just not available here. Um, I would take the time to understand what was in them, where they were tested, where they were made, by who, and so on and so forth. Um, and after 
paying huge premiums to get them here or traveling home with a mountain of suitcases um, filled with these items in the summer, um, it kind of seemed the next obvious step was to bring it to everybody else and have an online platform where they could be available. So that's where we are today. Yes. Lovely. Hi, everyone. I'm Chantelle. I'm the founder of Arc Children. Arc Children is a children's store. We offer um, safe, safe and sustainable um, toys and accessories for babies, toddlers and children. Um, similarly to both Nicola and Katie, my, my um, journey into, into eco-consciousness started probably about three years ago. Um, when my eldest daughter came home from school. So I'm a mother of four, uh, sorry, I, I interject. I'm a mother of four, seven, five, and I have twins that are two. Um, and it was my older daughter, she came home from school, she was doing a project and she began speaking to me about um, our water consumption. And she put her, her case um, to me so eloquently and she was so passionate about us, you know, being more conservative with the amount of water that we use. But I actually felt embarrassed as a mother that my child was telling me <laughs> I'm using too much water, I'm not um, recycling enough, should we consider using this instead of that? And I, it actually, um, it sparked something deep within my heart because it made me realize um, that our, our, our children, as parents, our children watch us way more than we, or that I'd given um, any relevance to. And so she was going to school, learning about sustainability and coming home and realizing that a lot of the things she was learning, we weren't implementing in the home. Um, and so what began as um, a family project, quote unquote, became a way of life for us. And so, yeah, um, our, the business was almost birthed out of that after having my twins. Um, I had decided that actually, I think that this is something that I wanted to pursue um, more full time. And so therein came Arc Children. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so before we start the session, uh, a few key topics that we're going to be discussing today, um, the issues uh, with uh, non-eco-friendly toys. And uh, when you look into it, it's, it's insane because one, overconsumption. Uh, there is so much gifting that is um, you know, uh, prevalent with kids. Uh, they outgrow these toys so quickly, you know, I mean, they get bored very easily, they grow up and it's not, you know, relevant anymore. Two, consumption of plastics. Um, plastic rots in our environment, as we most of us already know, um, for over 450 years and something that our children must be using for about a month to a year actually just rots in our landfills and oceans three toxic materials and um, four building a generation from the very beginning um, you know inculcating eco-friendly habits which are more sustainable um, for our children um, yes I, I, I believe we have one question anybody who has any sort of questions please post them in the chat and we'd uh, maybe address them mid-session or post the session Right. So before we start, a quick poll for us to put some things into perspective. Um, if all of you could just answer this uh, through um, your keyboards. Okay, wonderful. Mm. Question, <laughs> okay, so uh, what percentage toys manufactured are plastic? It's actually a glaring 90%. So, yeah, um, and to, to put that in further perspective. What is the size of the toy industry today? It's a $90 billion industry. Wow. <laughs> 
And what percentage of toys contain harmful chemicals? Well, it is 25%. Um, this was a study done by the UNEP. And um, when you think of the fact that 25% of the toys are actually consist of toxic materials, the implications for our children are insane. Okay, that's not higher. Yeah. Stop sharing this. Okay, so beginning the session, um, you know, uh, the first thing I'd like to discuss with you all um, on a more generic basis, what is the importance of toys, rather importance of selecting the right toys for our children's um, development and learning? So, I mean, any of you could just pop in and kickstart the discussion. Sorry, can you repeat that? I, do, I don't think I had yeah. that. Sorry. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, the discussion um, um, around the importance of toys, rather basically selecting the right toys for our children and the importance of that for our children's development and learning. Well, I think starting off with um, the importance of toys, um, it links to play. Obviously, and um, that play, depending on the on the toy, it, that could be uh, child centered play. Um, it could be open ended, which is absolutely crucial um, for childhood development. Um, so, depending on obviously, we could look at the the range of toys and what what kind of toys um, bring out those different stages of development. Um, but toys are important. It's just the uh, what toys we're using and how we're using them to to align that to childhood development. I mean, there's toys that would spark curiosity. There's, there's um, I think we lost Nicole. Toys that would spark imagination and role play. And then it, it's then linking, with, okay, my, my internet's a bit unstable, I think. Um, so I think the importance of toys, yes, that they are so important on so many levels and so many, the link to the, the theory of childhood development, uh, for social and emotional aspects, language development, uh, cognitive development. So there's the, it depends on what toys we're, we're kind of looking at really and how they fuel uh, child development. And I think as well, in terms of relating it to, you know, the, the whole environmental impact as well from a parent, as well as for the planet, um, you know, to to buy toys that I, I certainly avoid toys that are very age specific or that might carry a theme. Um, yes, because the other thing I would then need to buy three of them um which is expensive um it's not the right thing to do um and so by being careful and buying thinking and thinking that little bit harder about the kind of toys that I'm buying I could essentially buy one item that all three of my children can use albeit yeah. in different ways um but if it also doesn't carry a theme it doesn't matter if my two-year-old likes Peppa Pig and the big yeah. one likes Spider-Man. It doesn't carry a theme, so it won't come into fashion or out of fashion either. Yeah. Um, in actual yeah. fact, that toy could be a jumping board for Peppa Pig, but it could also be a slide for Spider-Man. You know, the same thing could do multi could be multiple uses. So from... Um, a parent's perspective as well as um, the planet, I think there's a number of considerations to make sure that we are yeah, buying, thinking through our purchases to make sure that they're not a one-time disposable. Yeah, and I think you're right in what you're saying there because how many times do we walk into like somewhere like ELC or, or um, you know, I'm talking like the high street kind of shops and the kids are like, oh, they've seen that on the TV and they've seen that and they want this and they want that. And, and you and you get it because you think, oh, well, yeah, my kids, you know, they they want this and they, but do they actually need it? And what, what benefit do they get from that? And I suppose then that comes into later on is that waste side of things. 
you know, and, you know, tips that we could be maybe giving. And I, I, we've got into kind of like a recycling thing at home where my girls now know, not just with toys, but with clothes and with books, mm -hmm. they now know and they choose what toys and, and clothes and things that they want to give to the children that don't have anything. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think, you know, this is why it's so important about educating our children and, um, and getting them to understand that this one-time toy of Peppa Pig, um, you know, might, might give them maybe, what, half an hour, you know? Um, and where does it go from there, you know? And so there's so many aspects to it. Um, it's actually quite a mind hole, really, when you think about it. Yeah, I think it's such a huge, broad <laughs> topic. <laughs> It's so true. I think I think you've both said some really, really interesting things. And I really liked what Katie said um, with regards to um, looking to source toys for your children that can carry over that all of the children can play with. And I think just like with anything else in our household now that we have um, become more eco-conscious is that we look at every purchase as an investment, whether it be from clothes, whether it be to, you know, across the board and and toys especially because you want them to last and you want yeah. for your children to get the most out of it um and just going back to what Nicola was saying about um you know playing with toys and learning through play I actually think that is the most natural way for a child to learn that is learning through play so naturally as a parent you want to give your child an enriching environment wherein they can explore they can um um, you know, create, they can, um, it's that curiosity, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, it's that, you know, that's one of the things that we do here My, all the time it is learning through play, learning through child independent, child interest play. That's where these kind of toys, uh, come into that. I mean, how many times do you see a child and they pick something up and what they do with that toy and how that language starts coming out. It's just, it, it fascinates me, mm. you know, and you, you met, I, I love to just sit and observe how, how they can turn a, a box into something that's I just, so. I, mean, I mean, we'll probably go into this a little bit more later about, you know, what kind of toys should we be doing? You know, I'm a big believer in make your own, you know, or um, loose part play. The, the, the less amount the toy of, does, the more a yeah. child does. Yeah. I was reading a book yesterday and it, and it, it is, I mean, it was relating to, you know, the digital device takeover that we're seeing, but I think mm. it relates very much also to toys that do too much, that, that they don't let the child make the sound that a wooden fire engine might you know your child would make the nino rather than pressing a button and it does yes. it for them for example but this book was essentially alluding to the fact that so many conveniences of today are just killing off the creativity in children and actually there are writers there are artists that actually at the moment or, or could potentially be growing up in, in a world where they may never become a writer or an artist and that's something that that person is yeah. could be very very good at but unfortunately the devices the toys that do things for them are just killing it off and they're not letting these people come to fruition um it, it's quite a scary thought Mm. I, I agree. I read something very similar, in, but this was not a book, it was an article. Um, and and it, it touched upon several of the points that you just mentioned. But, but one of them that was uh, super key, like you said, is that if a child is sitting there and is being entertained by bright lights and, and you know, all these noises, which naturally most children probably would be attracted to if you put that in front of them. But the, the truth is it's not really stimulating. So it's entertaining as opposed to stimulating. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is the child gets um, comfortable with the concept of always being entertained mm -hmm. as opposed yeah. to thinking inside the box exploring and um, like you said and, and, and making those own noises themselves and doing those own actions themselves so I do think that it is really really um, important that we do look at the, the toys that we are buying for our children and there's no there's no you know right or wrong necessarily I'm not mum shaming or anything like that I think being a mum is is a is a oh, tough and <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah and you're right exactly what you're saying though there's Chantelle is that it's actually you know being you know with some parents don't know you know no. um, okay you know I'm an early years professional but but some parents don't know what what milestones should a child be technically reaching and what they should be playing with and I think that there's there's some um some products in the market now that you know they're, they're saying on the box develop social skills this develops gross motor skills fine motor skills parents don't know that um and it, it is it's you know it, it's, it's it, Oh, it's just, it's the Resources side. like this, um, I, th I think, are, are key because, like you say, I mean, it's there's not really there's no right or wrong, but if it just invites people to have maybe a small checklist of two or three things that they yeah. might consider the next time they are in a toy shop or the next time that it's a birth, they need to buy a birthday or a Christmas gift or something, um, and just to kind of think about those few things, does it? does this particular item carry a theme? Is it age specific? Yeah. You know, what is it made from? Um, and and e even just to keep those things, there is a, a, a lot more that you could shortlist, which might be more relevant to you. But I think mm -hmm. even just to have a short, short wish list of things from things makes you a more conscious shopper. And I think ultimately will make for a more conscious purchase that will be considerably more valuable to you than, a purchase that wasn't thought through in any way. Absolutely. Yeah. Some wonderful points from you all, whether uh, in terms of toys not being age specific, leaving room for some certain imagination rather than just having toys that entertain new materials. I think there's um, yeah, some really relevant um, is topics to think about. Um, then let's come down to the main issues with commercial toys broadly. Um, plastic toys more broadly. What what are the issues associated with these commercial toys? Material. Think, yes, in terms yeah. of materials, plastics used, um, toxicity. I think I think one of the big ones. Just going back to the poll that you did at the very beginning. Um, it is interesting that um, at the moment, uh, a, a whopping, I, I believe um, the stats were taken back in uh, 2019, um, that a whopping 90% of toys on the shelf that are being um, yes. you know, advocated for children are plastic. Yes. Now the truth is just like with everything else, toys have a shelf life and after that shelf life, where do they go? And a lot of the plastic toys that are being manufactured um, um, in this day and age are not recyclable. So they are sitting in landfills and they are taking up a lot of space. They are, um, you know, leaking uh, dangerous or toxic gases into the environment. And so these are things that we need to be conscious of as well as the aspect of play. Um, these are the things that we need, now need to start thinking about. We need to think about our children and the next generation coming thereafter. Um, we're, not do, we're not, you know, by us not tackling this, this issue or this challenge we're not doing them any favors i think as well whatever examples as parents we set now i mean you know we've got habits to change because these are things that our parents didn't know therefore didn't do or implement when we were growing up and so we've now got a relatively hard task of changing what we knew as normal um whereas i think we're actually in a, an, an amazing position that our children can grow up not having to reverse bad habits because they never had them in the first place you know they're just yeah. growing up and, and what what is good is normal to them and that's just a, a, an everyday behavior so i think we're we're kind of it's a shame that we've got to undo so much but i think we're in a very good position um mm. to make sure that generations ahead of us are just automatically doing the right thing yeah i mean i can't even imagine you know back in the 80s i'm showing my age a little bit now but back in the 80s when i was growing up you know and uh my mum and dad you know they'd be like putting the rubbish out and it would just be one bin you know i mean how many bins that look at the uk now you've got a brown bin you've got a green bin you've got a blue bin you've got a black bin you're like seriously i go back to the uk and i'm like which bin <laughs> <is> this in <laughs> No, and that's good. I'm not saying I'm not, you know, and I, and I think like living in the Middle East, um, you know, we, we uh, 
not really Dubai, but when I was I was in Doha for, for a very long time, and we had to pay uh, quite a lot of money for recycling, and and that can be a deterrent. You know, people are like, oh, I'm not paying for recycling. Just you know, put it put it in the normal bin. I mean, Dubai's got a lot better with with that, and 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 again, it, it comes down to you know getting the kids to know and getting recycling within the schools and the nurseries and. And, and, you know, building that kind of bridge so they know that this is the norm and this is what, you know, what we do. But it definitely, I definitely don't like putting the bin out when I go back to the UK. So I, I end up spending <laughs> half an hour sorting it all out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's responsible. It's well, that uh, whilst we kind of have spoken about, you know, the environmental and we, we all know the implications of plastic on our health, which is why we all avoid drinking from plastic bottles and chemicals that leach. And I think only now, are those dangers starting to come to fruition when they're looking at the genetic makeup and hormones and things, issues that people are facing as a result of that? I mean, that's a whole topic, I think, that you could look at on its own. I think even separate to all of that um, comes another question. It, it comes another com compartment of these toys are being made where and sometimes I think it goes back to what you would have what we all would have heard our parents say often if it sounds too good to be true then it is you know if something is too cheap yeah. then for me anyway it would spark a question that would be well how can something be so cheap you know yeah. it, the person who made it probably isn't being paid correctly exactly. and then there's a whole social set of issues that then and, and humanitarian issues that then come behind that as well and so there, there's a number of different components I think to consider but but cheap is not better um, yeah. convenient is not better um, yeah is the, the think, overarching message and that there's generally at this part of the chain or this part of the chain there's somebody or something somewhere there's a price being paid which yeah. I, I never looked at it never looked at it until I was a parent and it, I remember very vividly one of the mums said to me we were out and we were buying these teething things uh for the girls and I remember that one of the parents saying to me, uh, that, that my friend saying to me, oh, well, you need the one that's BPA free. I was like, what? What, what, do, you, what do you mean BPA free? She was like, well, yeah, it, it, you know, if they're going to be like chewing on this Teva, and you, see, you know, the plastic in it, and, you know, some things have got lead. I was like, whoa, this was just like a minefield, you know? Um, and, and so you're right, you know, there's all these toxins and things and, and they predominantly come from these cheaper brands. Um, and, and like you say, where do they end up? They've got a lot, they've got a really low, um, limited shelf life. They can't be recycled. They end up in these landfills. You know, yeah, it's just, it's just a minefield. Yeah, no, I, I guess whether it is um, plastics that can just be sort of, these toys can come in massively uh, uh, bright colors, um, the shapes are so easily moldable with plastic that, you know, there is a plethora of options available. Um, there are certain limitations. Otherwise, even in terms of toxic paints, I think it's, it's insane that we're only noticing this now that mm, yeah. these paints that are used to paint a lot of toys is act, uh, consist of such toxic uh, materials. And at least like for us, like when we were young, we were eating off plastic plates, which were red and blue and green in color, but you don't realize the health impact these uh, materials can have. I agree. Somebody's asked a question about um, recycling stations for toys. Um, again, I think if you were buying, you know, wooden toys and things, the recycling issue becomes a whole lot easier. Um, but I would definitely, there are, um, there are a lot of charities here. So providing the toys are obviously whole and stuff. I think those are, we're in a great location. There's a number of different charities that you can give toys to, um, to make sure that they are being reused again. Um, I also think as well, I've seen popping up, um, 
because it's not always like I understand that it's not always affordable to just buy new toys all the time um, as well. But I've seen some um, organizations popping up that do toy rental. So it's also a good way to try toys before you buy them as well to know that it works for your home. We don't all, all also have a lot of space. So being able to rent them for that particular point in development or age and then hand it back when you no longer need it. Um, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Is, yeah, yeah. I think where there, there's a number of things that are already out there, but I keep seeing more of them pop up and I think mm. they're a new good thing. Yeah, it'd be interesting. To, I, I'd actually be quite interesting to look into that. Um, I think it would be hard within the restrictions at the moment. It's got to be quarantined. I don't know, well, within the nursery, we can't, the children can't bring their own toys in from home. It's got to be 72 hours quarantine. So, I mean, like all those kind of things would be quite interesting at the moment um, to see if they would be viable. Um, I know there's quite a few pages on them, some of the mums groups here that you can do like buy it, sell it, swap it. Mm -hmm. And it's like a recycling uh, a phase, you know, the phase that you've run, maybe been on there. Um, I've, I've got loads of stuff on there. And, you know, some, some, of, some of these kids here, there's, you know, they, they've had so much given to them over the years. Yeah, at the moment, it's the finance of the economy is really difficult and parents are maybe not buying as much. But, you know, buying and swapping and, and selling on these Facebook pages, I, I feel, has saved me a lot. Um, so um yeah it's, it's just also of good toys like we were talking about the life even when you may have finished with it once you've had that extended use from it um yeah. it could then it's still in fine condition and yeah. can still be passed along to somebody else um somebody's just uh, mentioned in the chat there about where can we buy toys that are second hand so like these these are, are examples the there's the buy it sell it um the uae there's arabian ranches uh, mums uh obviously i'm talking about in the area with me here sustainable city have a mums group um yeah. and there are always uh, secondhand toys on there that are in pristine condition for a third of the price um yeah. even even as an industry you know sometimes i look at things like that um, you know i have a budget um, and I will look at toys that might be secondhand um, and still in perfect condition for, for here. We don't always buy brand new because it's not viable. Um, yeah. So I would definitely check out some of those Facebook pages, um, you know, the mum's recycling pages for sure. Lovely. There's also um, the Baby Bazaar. I believe that's still running monthly. Mm. Um, there, there's some really, really great buys there. I remember, especially when my younger ones were a lot, with my eldest and my second and we were relatively new to Dubai um, and I remember buying things from there that were still boxed even sometimes there were clothes there that still had tags in them so you can there are as, as Nicola mentioned there are a lot of groups whether it be on Facebook um, or your community groups or um, as Katie mentioned some of these companies that rent the toys often do give you an option of buying them if you're happy with them after some time I think um, as well, there's, and I think maybe some of you have seen them, we don't have the option on, on our website yet. We're having a new website made, but there's a lot of um, options now, which I think are relatively normal in other parts of the world, where you can actually do a, you buy now, you get your item now, but actually you can pay over a period of time, whether that's two, three or six months. Um, and I think that's key because when we're talking about, again, you know, trying to buy the best that you can buy that doesn't that does sometimes come at a price um and so if you do prefer to buy <coughs> new as well then you do have the option also to spread the cost rather than it being a big investment all in one go um, and I see more and more of those things becoming available now as well which I think is very helpful to families yeah. definitely especially within the economy and stuff that we're in but there, there's so many deterrents though from why people don't buy eco-friendly toys as much because they are expensive there's no there's no you know there, there's no way to, to say that they are expensive because they come from fair trade or they're using the pop the proper products um you know and 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 that that's that can be hard especially in the in the economy that we're in at the moment 
budgets are low, families are, uh, you know, wanting to provide for their children. I mean, how many times do you go on Facebook or social media and it's a child's birthday or, or it's Christmas or it's Eid and you see these pictures and these parents have gone, oh, I can't wait for the child to wake up in the morning. And there's a mass of toys and you're like, seriously? Like, yeah. Does your child really need all that? Where, what, you know, is it is it ethically sourced? What, you know, what are the what are the contents and materials going to be of those? Because it the vast majority of it's going to be cheap, and it's going to end up in landfill. Absolutely, wonderfully said. And and the concept of I think eco friendly toys does not have to necessarily be expensive because. Um, you are choosing uh, more mindfully. So you're not just buying a plethora of options that the child just gets to throw around and throw a fit about. Um, you are participating in exchanges and passing these toys down. Um, if you're thinking with that sort of a mindset, so the toys have better usage. And I think even in terms of durability, I mean, um, you know, a lot of eco-friendly toys that one can choose have a very, uh, longer have a long uh, shelf life than all the other commercial products that just break so easily yeah so yeah. In, in the long term you're actually saving because Absolutely. they are lasting longer you know how many times have you bought something and, and, and it's broken straight away and you're like oh. We, we've spoken yeah, about this here when you find an expensive item and you think oh shall we shan't we um, I try and think about it in a cost per play. So, you know, how I've got three children who will all use it and my two-year-old will use it, my seven-year-old uses it. So that's three children over a period of, of let's say, five, five years each or seven years each. Um, that's 21 years and they'll play with it, you know, almost every day or over that period of time. And so actually that 700 dirhams or 500 dirhams or whatever it is, when you break it down in that way, cost per play, actually not very much at all. Absolutely. I, I, agree. I agree. And I think it goes back again to investing in toys. I don't think sometimes, obviously um, Nicola raised a good point that we are in a day and age and we are in a time where people are, you know, trying to um, look at their spends um, more stringently. However, if you do um, buy an item that is maybe a little bit more um, than, than the average item because it's um, sustainable or it is eco-friendly, again, you have to ask yourself, is it an investment? If the answer is yes, then as, is it a good investment? Sorry, if the answer is yes, then as with anything else that you would invest in, then it's a worthy investment. Is it gonna last? Which goes back to what Katie was saying. Is it going to last if the answer is yes then it's a worthy investment and you can generally you know. buy less if you choose better so Absolutely. you've saved money anyway because you haven't had to replace a broken one in which case you may as well have got the most expensive in the first <laughs> place i think i've been there a few times i've said i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> in the past that's it <laughs> just to realize the waste yeah that's it's one so yeah you were saying something shanta no, I was just going to say, um, uh, when Katie said that, it reminded me there was a study, I can't, I can't see it in my notes now, um, so I don't want to misquote, but there was a study that was done that found that actually children with less toys, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying that you should buy your children less toys. If you, if you have the means and you want to you know, treat your children, then by all means do that. But they were saying children with less toys tend to have longer concentration spans and tend to do more with the toys that they have than those that have like a plethora of toys in one place. So again, it goes back to um, creating an environment that is conducive to learning. You want the child to explore. You want the child to play with, as Nicola said earlier on, play with uh, the same toy in perhaps many different ways. That's how we nurture the creative side of children. And we raise um, more intuitive, more... Um, naturally resourceful children more confident children because they are used to using perhaps less toys but doing more with those toys yeah absolutely think, well another sorry no, no, go ahead go ahead I, a lot of people have spoken about it um i think i'm sure it's something that happens regularly nicola i'm sure you can confirm in nurseries but i know quite a few people speak about it and introduce it at home as well 
which is toy rotation. So when you have toys, don't always put everything in the playroom all the time. Take some of it away um, and then change them over every once a month. Um, and those toys are like new again. And again, take them away, put them back. But you could also team up with friends um, and do a little swap between your friends, maybe not in COVID times or, but that's maybe another good way of being able to rotate toys and keep them fresh, keep interests um, and curiosity going um, without the big financial investment. That's Absolutely. a wonderful tip. That's a wonderful tip. Yes, Nicola, you were saying something. I know, from a nursery point of view, I, I think you've, you've, you've kind of said it there, is it's about that rotation. And obviously we have restrictions at the moment and things need to be quarantined 72 hours and, and this, but I have um, generally three classes per age group. Um, and I, you know, we can't afford to, to go and buy three lots of things. And, and so it is about, you know, looking at our curriculum, looking at our themes and how we can, yes, we go with the child's interests and, and, and pull those resources out when, when they're needed, but the classes can rotate them. You know, they're, they're not all gonna be doing the hungry caterpillar at the same time, you know, and we can kind of then look at how we adapt that curriculum as well. So yeah, rotation is, is good. When I was at home though, and I used to try to do that, and I never really had the space, but when I did, you know, when we, I kind of brought something out again, it'd be, they'd, they'd get excited about it again, you know? And I think you, you're right in what you're saying though, Katie, is like, you know, once you, once a child has got all of this, you know, this mass of a playroom in front of them, you know, when, when are we actually allowing the children to get bored? We're not, we're, we're constantly yeah. providing them with, oh, well, let's play this, let's play this. My kids will come to me and they'll say, I'm bored, mommy. I'm like, okay, we'll get rid of all those toys then. You don't obviously need them anymore. No, 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 no. children sometimes, you know, and, and, you're, and what we've, Chantal made a very valid point. You know, we, we, we need them to be, you know, curious and develop those cognitive skills and those those critical thinking skills that some children just don't get chance to develop you know because they're yeah. constantly provided for absolutely and I think another um, key question that I have for you ladies is um, one which materials should one be avoiding what are the alternative materials that one could look out for and of course, greenwashing and how to sort of stay away from um, toys that are marketed as sustainable toys while they actually aren't. I think that's mm -hmm. a tricky one. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. that, that's a tricky one because there's so many things with so many labels. Um, and who do you believe um, the, these days? Um, but yeah. I, I think it also boils down to individual families. You know, we've all got very different budgets for what we can. But I think if you personally, I think sometimes, you know, if if you know and understand it's a brand that has a track record or a history. So a, a Grimm's, for example, um, it's been in business. It's still a family owned business. They They haven't floated they're not privately owned or by a venture capital or you know there's no it, it's family run and owned um and has been for for over 50 years now they still to this day manage everything from the dyeing of the wood to the cutting of the wood to the packaging it before it goes out and all of the wood comes from a managed forest i mean it, it can require some thought and research and time and dedication um, but the information is out there and then there's useful resources like this and websites and and who kind of help to bring this information to you um, but equally you know it, I, I appreciate that Grimm's isn't always readily available to to everybody um, but sometimes I think the as we mentioned earlier you know the, the cheaper items generally aren't always better um, and premium can often mean that you're buying from a managed forest and that every step of the way is certified independently as well from us from an independent um 
regulator rather than a, a, from a factory level or whatever else. Um, there, there's multiple parts to it, but um, research um, and looking into a brand and all of the details underneath it is, is I guess, one of the key re key ways. Logos now, isn't that you know? Um, you know, you BPA free, lead free, toxin free, and um, those kind of things. I think really parents and uh, should be looking for. You know, really, yeah. I, I, like I said before, I didn't realise until I was a parent. You know, BPA and things like that is such a big thing. Um, so it's it's about knowledge, isn't it? And and you know, we're, we're lucky to be able to have the, like Chantal made that a very valid point. We can't say that we don't we didn't know now when when the world and the society that we live in is everything's online it's at, the, at your yeah. fingertips you can research that product you can you know find out the background to it so i think that's really important yeah i i, I would agree i think that um naturally you want to stay away from anything that looks glaringly um not good and i'm sure that most parents and caregivers do that naturally um any um, plastic materials that, like you said, may have harmful toxins in them or what have you, um, and definitely be looking at alternatives, um, wooden items, um, food-grade silicon items. Um, and another thing that I would say is that um, maybe a little bit before starting out in business is, and this is not just to plug myself or, or Katie or, you know, any of the other local businesses, but I do think that there is something to be said about buying local because these are our owners that you know like you, you know I'm here yeah, you I'm see really Kate, you know that she has a genuine passion for what she does she's been in this industry matter of fact I think um honestly speaking I think Katie was one of the first people that I knew out here when I that was doing what she did um and so these are people that have literally you know they, there's a there's an there's a vested interest in what they're doing where mothers where you know um local business owners so i do think there is something for buying local and seeing the people that you're buying from as opposed to buying you know mass produced from someone who you'll probably never meet who you don't know you know i'm i'm yeah you've, I, you've done the research on behalf of other parents as well yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely i was i was going to mention that as well as about buying local you know and and you know you guys are obviously doing that and, and and plugging it and 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 it is so important it's important to be supporting um supporting our community you know there's a lot of families going through a lot of a lot of financial difficulty at the minute and um, so to, you know support these local mums that are, are making these beautiful hand-stitched um dolls and things like that and um there's a question that's just come up from Patricia about, you know, how how do we then say to people that haven't, you know, I've got low income, who can't afford to be buying from these manufacturers. Again, like there's so much on these on the Facebook groups and community groups that mums, you know, mums like you guys, um, you know, are, are selling these these eco-friendly toys at such good prices. Um, I, I think places, yeah, there's. Yeah, big selection of them, I think, available now. It's just a question of finding them. And maybe that's a project for afterwards, Sakriti, is uh, compiling <laughs> lists, yeah, of, of yeah. all of these places. I'd yeah, like definitely send it over. I think it's, it's uh, it'll be great to have a list in one place and everybody attending the session, we'd, we'd yeah. be happy to collate that for you. Um, other, uh, we have, yeah, you were saying, Sharon. Yeah, I just want to build on with what Patricia has mentioned as well. Um, people's, people's perception of um, child development and toys is that a child's got to have these toys and they've got to have this and they've got to have that. Do you know what? They don't. And it doesn't matter how much money you earn, if, you know, how many times have you bought a child a toy and they want to play with the box? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And, and taking uh, taking this forward, as Nicola mentioned, um, my next question is: building an eco conscious generation is has is so imperative. And what activities as a parent can we do to make our children more aware and make them more mindful consumers? And how can we 
say no to all the tantrums they throw to purchasing all these uh, commercial toys that there are and i mean they're so attractive that how do you sort of say no i think <laughs> <laughs> I, i think it's an interesting question i think that the i think the lovely uh, thing about uh, children is that often they'll do as they see and not as they're told So you know mm-hmm. they they used to be that old saying do as i say and not as i do it doesn't work they watch you they see what's going on in the household and naturally they emulate what they see and so as a parent if you are living um an eco conscious lifestyle your children will naturally gravitate to, towards that it's a way of life for them it, it then becomes something that they don't have to learn it's something that they're nurtured into um and so i believe that you know going back to the second part of your question um when how how do you say no to when your children are asking for something i'll 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 give you a prime example so um my my daughter wanted a walkie talkie um and it was probably somewhere in around just after the lockdown period and i wasn't too keen on going out and i did say she could have a treat you know we we put in all this all these hours of home learning and there had to be some kind of incentive um but i also knew that a walkie talkie would be a novelty item for them they play with it maybe for a couple of days and then they wouldn't be interested in it anymore um and so we went through the cupboards and we found some old um good old cardboard cups and i said you know what i'm going to teach you what i used to do when i was a little girl and so we put holes in the cups and string through the cups and we were running around the house with this um you know homemade walkie talkie and they had an absolute blast so i said no without saying no because they had 3 days of fun forgot about them and i was never asked for walkie talkies again mm-hmm. so it goes to show that sometimes you can say no without without actually saying no or you can provide an alternative that your children will be equally as happy with i think as well sometimes again without saying no but having um if you my kids are, are very much involved you know with with recycling or will will openly discuss you know the life cycle of something and where it ends up and which bin does it go in in our kitchen we have a bin and a recycling bin and so which one do you think it goes in and just i think by involving them in things like that and helping them to understand where things end up and why we might not purchase something that was plastic or why we wouldn't drink water from a plastic bottle for example and then those messages being reinforced in places like nurseries and school and just generally in society um yeah. i think it, it almost you know becomes one of those things that you don't have to say no because as the more you do things like that your kids probably wouldn't ask for certain things anyway um or you could say to them well do you remember that conversation that we had and we spoke about where this would end up when it's no good anymore how do you think this item fits with that and they would make the decision then themselves to say okay well maybe that's not such a good choice after all um so yeah i mean that's a that's a situation that's played out here similarly to Chantel um in the past okay yeah okay. wonderful uh, you have something to say nicola yeah i was just going to i love i love that um making the chantal making the the what you using the walkie talkie situation and um we, we do a lot of that here at the nurseries like getting the children to have these ideas and and making making toys i mean ha- i love like my girls um we got two well we got a dog and two cats and they ended up spending nearly 3 hours transforming this box decorating this cardboard box into a house for the cats and the dog and and you know and what that that's what i'm talking about is like you don't necessarily need toys you know kids will will you know give them we we do a lot of den making and um you know we have t- we have tires and wooden poles and and plastic tubing you will what the kids can make you know they make their own toys they make their own play you know we don't need all this fancy stuff so um, yeah I, i love that idea that was brilliant absolutely so um we have completed one hour in our session and nicola at the beginning of the session asked me oh is this going to last an hour and i was like don't worry <laughs> i'm going to like maybe want some more time on it 
I, I could keep going now. <laughs> So yeah, uh, okay, so um, um, if anybody wants to log off, please uh, feel free to, uh, you can, you know, send in your questions um, uh, in our email, uh, you can email us at hello at shifteco.ae and we'd be happy to pass on your questions to our panelists today. And um, uh, thank you all for attending this session. One quick last question I have, uh, and I'm going to take the liberty of extending this session by five minutes. Any DIY activities um, that you have in mind that are creative and interesting enough, or any sort of activities um, you know you can think of where our children can connect with nature better? Um, any suggestions on those, and then we can close the session. Ah, uh, see that. See, I need another half an hour now. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so much. There is so much that you can do with your with with your children to connect them to nature. And, and still link that to, to toys and, and, you know, buy a bike, you know, all right, in the summer, it's not brilliant, you ain't, you're not going to be able to, to get out on your bikes as much, but, you know, um, making dens, um, you Magic know, building, build, making walkie-talkies, you know, all those kind of things, um, connecting with nature, beach cleanups, you know, if you get away over the summer, if you're lucky enough to get to Thailand or somewhere like that, go and do a beach cleanup. You know, go to a turtle sanctuary that they've rescued from, you know, from the beach and things like that. And just get the children to understand that we live in a bigger world than their playroom and that, you know. So, um, and also don't always, don't always think that toys are the answer. Buy an experience, you know. Go and, go and, instead of buying them a toy, give them lessons. Let them learn horse riding or swimming or, you know, it doesn't have to be a toy. Oh, yeah, that's definitely yeah. one. One of my children's favourite things um, to do is make potions in the garden. And we, um, I, I use it as an opportunity to get them to practice their spelling and handwriting as well. So I tell them before we make the potions, we have to write down the ingredients list. So even without realising, you know, I'm getting them to do a bit of homework, so to speak, whether it's six rocks. Were you a teacher before? No. Uh -huh. You should be. <laughs> Three flowers, you know, five, five leaves or whatever, and two, two handfuls of mud, um, two scoops of mud, and they will then practice their writing and we'll just get a bowl and off they go. And like um, you say, they don't realise what they're doing, you know? Did you did you not used to do that though as a little girl? Did you not used to pick the flowers and mash all the flowers? Wooden spoon and and again, I it will my two-year-old, my five-year-old, my seven-year-old are all so thoroughly enjoying that one little activity and they're outside and that's it. And that's, that's, and it becomes that's the beauty. You know? <laughs> that's the beauty of open-ended play and using things that you have in the house that you don't you know they can they can just it's, it's just it's just amazing it just it, it fascinates me yeah yeah I like that one. that's a really good one I like especially because you've tied it into them writing it down and I like that one I definitely <laughs> will, be, will be will be implementing that at home so um, for, for us we often make so my girls particularly like making binoculars um, and when one decides that they want to make binoculars, the other wants to make binoculars. And of course, there's four of them. So we're, we, we forever have um, different styles of binoculars going on. They're, they're new rolls that they've stuck together and painted or, 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 you know, written over. And another one, surprisingly, is um, uh, accessories. So my five-year-old, she absolutely loves making like little bracelets out of whether it be an old toilet roll or an old piece of cardboard um or recycled paper um and she'll often make them for all of us in the house so if there's if there's something in the recycle I'm about to put it in the recycle bin and she's like no 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 mommy can I have that and I'll say yes yeah. <laughs> and then we end up with like bracelets necklaces she's even made a, a little handbag out of cardboard before oh, where she I know. Put I yeah, my daughter's going to be the next Louis Vuitton designer. <laughs> <laughs> Take it to brunch. <laughs> but I think ultimately, I, I encourage them to do whatever they'll be happy with. My my my, the outcome is always a happy a happy child, a happy individual that's had a, a great time playing and creating and exploring. 
Wonderful. So I, I think this is a great one. In fact, you mentioned binoculars as children. I remember we us making kaleidoscopes and that was just so creative and so fun. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I, I guess let's end the session on the note that eco-friendly living and e buying eco-friendly options does not always have to be expensive. There's so much that one can do to foster our children's creativity. And um, let's bust that myth that, you know, living an eco-friendly um, um, uh, lifestyle with toys does not have to be um, expensive necessarily. And um, thank you, thank you, all you lovely ladies, uh, Katie, Nicola, and Chantel, for being with us today. And thank you um, to all our attendees. I think it's been a very interactive session with lots of questions coming through. And I personally really enjoyed this session. Um, nice. This session is going to be available on our blog, um, Learn with Shift Eco. So if you log into our website, on the right hand side, there's an option for Learn. And um, you, the recording will be available at all times for um, you to pass around, share, or rewatch. And uh, any other questions, please feel free to email us. And we're definitely going to make a list of all the options in the UAE where you can ex um, exchange groups or um, you know subscription toys, etc. We're definitely going to send out that list to you. Brilliant. Thank you so Thank much you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All yeah, right. Bye. 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 Bye.